In this tutorial, we will look at some common questions in the topic of purification and separation. So the first type of question that we'll get in this chapter is that we're given a certain type of mixture. Remember, there are three combinations of mixtures, either solid-solid, solid-liquid, or liquid-liquid. And then we need to determine a method to separate the mixture. So in this question, it's talking about the preparation of lead to iodide. So for this question, it actually requires you to apply some concept that you will learn in the solubility of salts. You, when you come to that chapter, you will learn that lead to iodide is actually insoluble. So essentially, in order to separate lead to iodide from the mixture, we are looking at a solid and liquid mixture. So the method that we, are, we need to use is a very simple one, and it's that of filtration. Of all the different methods to separate mixtures, there are two methods that are commonly tested in exams. One is fractional distillation or simple distillation. The other one is chromatography. So if you only have time for two methods out of the many, please make sure that you learn these two very, very well. So in this question, we are looking at fractional distillation. Just a quick recall, fractional distillation is to separate a mixture of liquid and liquid where they are miscible in one another. So the difference in physical property which allows for separation of the liquids would be the difference in the boiling points of the liquid. Over here, the mixture, the liquid-liquid mixture is that of ethanol and water. The boiling point of ethanol is given to be 78, that of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So one key concept that you need to remember in distillation or fractional distillation is this, that the liquid with the lower boiling point will be distilled first because it will boil first and it will be collected first. So essentially it will be distilled out first. Okay, so in this case, the question is asking you how would the concentration of ethanol in the boiling flask change as distillation proceeds? If we look at the mixture, ethanol is the first liquid to be distilled. So over time, in the boiling flask, we are going to get lesser and lesser of ethanol. So essentially, as time proceeds, the concentration of ethanol will decrease and decrease and eventually reaches zero. So we are supposed to look for, uh, this is an MCQ question, we are supposed to look for uh, an option that depicts that. So again, as mentioned, ethanol is the lower boiling point liquid, so it will be, it will be distilled first. So the concentration of ethanol in the boiling flask would decrease over time until it reaches zero. So the correct answer over here would be C. The next common method that is usually tested on is that of chromatography. So you need to learn how chromatography works and the setup for chromatography, uh, experimental setup for chromatography. So one commonly asked question is, related to the starting line or in this question they call it the baseline but it's more commonly called the starting line or the start line it has to be drawn in pencil and not pen okay for part one this is actually a combination of two questions and the answer for each one it varies slightly so for example when we ask you why should the start line be drawn in pencil the answer is different from why should the start line be drawn not be drawn in ink okay why should the start line be drawn in pencil because pencil lead it does not dissolve in the solvent pencil lead is actually graphite graphite 
has a giant molecular structure so it doesn't dissolve in any solvent so therefore it will not be separated with the mixture okay if your um, uh, if your starting line is separated together with the mixture then it's going to contaminate your chromatogram okay the answer for why the start line should not be drawn in ink is slightly different why because ink pen, pen ink will dissolve in the solvent and then it will be separated okay and therefore contaminating the chromatogram Next, another common uh, term associated with chromatography is that of a locating agent because not all mixtures are colored. So sometimes we need to analyze the, the very famous uh, colorless one would be your amino acids. So in order to identify your colorless substances, we need to use something called a locating agent. Okay, so whenever you see the term locating agent, it means that the substances in the mixture are colorless so we need to apply a locating agent in order to identify the location of the spots now another important term associated with chromatography is that of rf value or retention factor and we need to be able to recall how to calculate retention factor using the formula shown on the slide. The significance of retention factor or RF value is that it is a constant under the same conditions. So over here we are given four spots. The question is asking you for which spot has an RF value of 0 0.37. Now this being an MCQ question means that there's no need for you to take out your ruler and do any measurements. Okay, the trick is this. RF value, for example, I'm going to use spot A. RF value is calculated by taking the distance between the spot and the start line divided by the distance between the solvent front and the start line. Okay, so if the spot is found at the start line, the RF value would be given would be calculated as one okay if the spot is found midway between the start line and the solvent front then it would have an rf value of 0 0.5 so if we are looking for something that is 0 0.37 we can use the midpoint as a gauge and from there we can see that b seems to be the likelier option Okay, if you look at A, A seems to be at the quarter mark. So A is likely to have an RF value of slightly above 0 0.25. In this question, we are looking again at a chromatogram. There are two different spots, X and Y, and we are asked to determine which one is correct uh, with regards to their RF value and whether they require a locating agent so from the formula of rf value you should be able to de deduce that a spot with a higher rf value would appear higher on the chromatogram so in this case spot y or substance y would have a larger rf value okay next whether or not a spot requires a locating agent depends on whether it's colored and again this would require some knowledge that you will learn later on in a, a later chapter in a later chapter of periodic table we will learn that transition element compounds or sorts are usually colored so if they are colored then they don't require a locating agent whereas sorts of group one two or three elements they are usually colorless so they would require a locating agent so with that in mind, X would require a locating agent and Y would have the larger RF value, meaning C is the correct answer.